Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am so excited to finally be sharing my small kitchen makeover on a budget with you guys. I have so many DIY kitchen updates and renovations to share with you and also some decorating ideas. I am super excited to share with you guys the affordable ways that I have found to update my countertops, my hardware and light fixtures, and even my kitchen and dining furniture. So definitely make sure that you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. Turn on your notification bell so that you don't miss any of my future uploads and let's just get started on this kitchen makeover by first clearing off my countertops and scrubbing them down really well because I am going to show you guys how I painted my countertops to completely transform them and make them look like they are brand new. As you can see, my countertops are in pretty poor shape. They are missing some of the laminate pieces as well as the tops of them just being so scratched and gouged. And the color just did not match with my kitchen. It never really matched with my kitchen, but especially since I did my last makeover where I painted the entire kitchen white, it really has just not been a good vibe. So I finally found a solution to go ahead and paint them. And the first thing that I did was wipe them down with my Jaws kitchen cleaner. And now I'm going in with a liquid sandpaper, which is a great degreaser to get them completely spotlessly clean and also rough up that surface to make it perfect for painting. Now I'm just going to make sure that I tape down all of the edges with painter's tape. And typically when I'm painting walls, I don't really use painter's tape, but since I had never done anything like this to countertops before, I just wanted to make sure that I could get as clean of lines as possible and not ruin my cabinets or the walls or anything like that because I wasn't going to be painting them in this video and I didn't want to do anything that would force me to have to repaint any of those things. So while I work on taping down everything, I wanted to come on here really quickly and talk to you guys about my personal motivation behind doing this kitchen makeover. My house is actually super small. It's under 1,500 square feet, which means a lot of the rooms are really small, especially including my kitchen and dining area. And also a lot of areas in the house need to be renovated or updated in order to be able to fit my personal style or what I want my house to be. And I just put that off for so long thinking that it would take a huge budget and a ton of talent to be able to transform these spaces and honestly I have neither. I don't have a lot of money to spend on making over my house and I didn't think I had enough talent to be able to do it myself anyway. But recently with the help of my friends Kristen from the channel Kristen Casper and Ashley from Till Vacuum Do Us Part, I was able to overcome that mindset and realize that my house is definitely enough. The talent and the budget that I have is definitely enough enough and I can absolutely transform these spaces with a little bit of creativity and elbow grease and I wanted to share that with you guys just in case you are feeling that same way so that you can know that you can do it too. So I finally have everything taped off here and I'll be able to start painting the countertops now. I'm so excited. Since I used the liquid sandpaper, I did not have to sand down my countertops and instead I could immediately start painting them. And to paint them, I'm just going to be using a white chalk paint. I thought that white would be best in my kitchen for the vision that I had and the color scheme that I already had going on in here. However, chalk paint does come in a ton of different colors in shades of grays, charcoals, blacks, pastel colors, pretty much any color that you could want for any project that you have, you can find it in a chalk paint. And shout out to my friend Kristen for being the one to suggest both the liquid sandpaper and the chalk paint. It really made this job a lot quicker and easier and kept this project from getting too overwhelming and I definitely appreciated those suggestions and that encouragement.
In case any of you out there are wondering what specific brands and products that I am using or wanting to do this project in your own kitchens, I am going to be sure to link everything that I possibly can that I've mentioned in this video or that I use in this video in the description box below just so that you guys can check it out, click on those links and order these products for yourself without having to do all of the prep and research that I had to do before starting this project. While I was working on this project, I told you guys that I did a ton of Instagram story sneak peeks and behind the scene clips that I shared just to let you know how everything was doing, what kind of progress I was making in real time and get you all excited for this video that was coming up. And those sneak peeks were actually super popular and they did really well. So thank you guys so much for being excited and interested in what I was sharing with you. And in case you don't currently follow me on Instagram, I am going to leave my handle linked in the description box for you guys. So you can just click on that it will take you right to my Instagram page and you can go ahead and follow me over there so that you can stay up to date in my everyday life any other projects that I'm doing and just get those sneak peek clips of any of the other videos that I am putting out for you guys okay I've got three layers of paint on and now it's time to do the polycrylic. To seal your countertops and make sure that the paint is going to last without chipping or being damaged for a long time, you wanna make sure that you're using a high quality polycrylic seal coating. And I actually chose to use the satin finish just because a lot of the other areas in my kitchen that are painted were painted with either a satin or semi-gloss finish. So I thought that this would work the best in this space. However, they do also have matte finishes or high gloss finishes. So there is a ton of options to choose from to fit your particular needs. On the can for the polycrylic, there were very specific instructions, which I definitely appreciated because again, I had never painted countertops before or really painted in this manner to need to use this product before. So it said to use a thin coat and just work on layers instead of trying to glob it all on at one time. It also said to use a higher quality brush. So I definitely opted for one that cost a little bit more. I think it was like seven or $8 as opposed to one that I could have gotten for like 60 cents. And then it also said to make sure that you minimized your brush strokes so I definitely did not go over it way too much I just focused on doing one or two brush strokes each time with a thin layer like it said and remembering that I could always build this up or go in and fill in any spots that I missed on the next layer Painting these countertops was definitely an all day project. I did three layers of the chalk paint and then three layers of the polycrylic. So by the time that I was done with each layer, I would have to wait for an hour before I could go back for the next layer. And that definitely ended up taking all day long between the paint time and the wait time. So if you are planning on doing this project for yourself, definitely make sure that you are doing it on a day where you can dedicate the full day to getting it done. Once I finish up on this first layer of polycrylic and while I'm waiting for it to dry to put on the second layer, I am just going to start working on our new kitchen table. And this is new to us, but not new in general. So I found this solid wood, or at least it was listed as solid wood, kitchen table on the Facebook Marketplace. And I got it for $40 and thought that I could just go ahead and refinish it. So I picked up some sandpaper and a wood stain that I thought would complement our kitchen really well. However, once I first started sanding it I realized that the listing was incorrect and it was more of a laminate veneer wood top instead of a solid wood top but that's okay I just went with the flow and I changed out my sandpaper to something a little more aggressive and decided to sand down all of the veneer top and then I would seal it later.
So while we are talking about sanding down this tabletop, I did want to go ahead and give a shout out to my friend Richard who let me borrow these electric sanders. He is the best and I am so thankful for him. He definitely made this project go a whole lot faster and a lot smoother for me because trying to hand sand down this veneer coating would have been impossible and probably would have made me give up on the entire project. Now if you are wanting to do a project like this and you're looking to paint your tabletop, then hand sanding would be no problem because you really just have to rough up that top layer and then you can go ahead and prime and paint with no problem but if you are looking to do something like I was where you really want to sand down an entire top layer and either stain or refinish after that then having an electric sander like this is so key so definitely make sure that you ask your friends or family members if you can borrow theirs if they own one and if you don't have anybody that will let you borrow one then you can always just order one for yourself especially if you're going to be working on a lot of projects like this or have plans to work on a lot of projects like this, it's definitely worth the investment and I am going to be ordering one for myself definitely because I have a ton of plans this year for just small updates that I can do around the house. But I'll go ahead and link these ones in the description box for you guys so that you can check them out and see if you might be interested in ordering one for yourself. Once I had the entire tabletop and edges sanded down, I'm just going to use my Jaws hardwood cleaner to wipe it all down, get all of that dust away from the tabletop as well as the legs so that when Derek gets home from work, he could help me bring it inside. And then I'm going to go inside and finish up the countertops. Okay, so I have two coats of the polycrylic on and they're just looking really good. And it's been drying for over an hour now, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and just pull the tape off. Pulling that tape off was so satisfying seeing those clean lines, but actually around the sink when I was pulling everything off, I noticed that some of it was not super clean lines and had leaked through the tape, which is fine. I kind of anticipated that happening just because it's hard to get it securely taped around that area. So before I did the final layer of the polycrylic, I just used my fingernail to scratch off the areas that had overlapped onto the sink and I had no problem with that. Once I had gotten all of that done, Derek was finally home from work so I had him help me take out the old table and bring in the new one so that I could also work on sealing that. Like I said before, I had originally planned on staining the tabletop, but once I sanded it down and realized that it was not solid wood, I thought that was no longer a viable option and instead decided to just go ahead and leave it this natural wood finish and just seal it up to make sure that it wouldn't be damaged this way. And I'm actually happy that this little hiccup occurred because I love the way that it turned out. And once the kitchen was all done and put together, it just looked so beautiful in here. So if something like this happens to you don't get down or discouraged by it just roll with the punches and realize that everything is going to happen the way that it's supposed to and things will always work out in the end For sealing the tabletop, I used that same satin finish polycrylic that I used on the countertops and I think it turned out absolutely beautiful. I'm so happy with it. So the next thing was the hardware in the kitchen and I didn't film this process. Instead, I'll use YouTube magic to turn it all black using Rust-Oleum semi-gloss finish spray paint. I did all of the hardware for my cabinets as well as the metal parts of my light fixtures just to give them a super easy and cheap DIY update. Thanks so much to my friend Ashley from Till Vacuum Do Us Part for inspiring me to update the hardware that way. Now it is finally time to start working on pulling everything together. We are in the home stretch here. So we first are going to move our chest freezer out of the kitchen because it just takes up a lot of space in here and really prevented me from being able to pull everything together the way that I wanted. We decided to put it in the kitchen center of the girls' playroom and we think that it fits fine in there. It doesn't take up too much space and the girls can play with the magnets so it does fit in that area. And then we're going to hang up these mug racks that I got for Christmas and 
and just have not hung up yet. We collect the Been There series of the Starbucks mugs and we want to display them in a way that is aesthetically pleasing but also makes our hearts happy. So this is what we decided on. We have these two mug racks and we're going to hang them side by side to put all of our mugs on. Luckily, both of these mug racks came with hardware included, so they came with screws and anchors for us to get them securely onto the wall, which I definitely appreciated. So Derek is just going to be in charge of that using the drill to get them hung up, and I was more in charge of measuring everything and making sure that they were placed exactly where we had envisioned them to be so that they would bring together this kitchen area the way that we wanted it to. I'm not gonna lie, it did take us a little while and a lot of teamwork to go ahead and get these up exactly where we wanted them to be, but once we got them up, they were so beautiful. I'm so pleased with the way that it turned out and I'm kicking myself for not having gotten it done sooner, but at least they're up now and that's all that matters. So here they are up on the wall and then I went ahead and put all of our mugs up and I'm just so happy with it. Now we're going to get working on the rest of this space by first putting down our new kitchen rug and I did order this from Ruggable. The reason why I chose a Ruggable rug is because they are actually machine washable and since this was going in the kitchen I thought that would just be perfect. There is this bottom layer here that stays on the floor and then there's this top layer which is the patterned rug and it just kind of velcros onto that bottom layer. It was super easy to get done and put together but anytime that there is a spill or it just needs a good washing you can easily remove it and put it into the washing machine and it will not fade or fray and all of the stains will come out so again I just thought that was going to be perfect for the kitchen and definitely worth the investment. I got a 5x7 in this striped pattern and I think it is just perfect for this modern farmhouse vibe that we have going on and then I'm just putting the table in here and the chairs and we did get these metal farmhouse chairs which again I think they complement the table beautifully. I also wanted to do a little bit of an update to the organization that I had in the laundry closet. So I just have these various bins from around the house that I collected that weren't being used and I'm going to switch everything from the plastic gray bins into these more wood tone and metal bins just because I think that this will go along with the aesthetic that I'm going for in the kitchen a little bit better. And it's not often that the laundry closet is just left open for everybody to see, but on the occasions that we don't close the doors. I just thought it would look nice for it to have a cohesive appearance throughout the entire kitchen. Like I said, most of these organization bins were just ones that I found around the house that weren't being used because I didn't want to spend a whole ton of money trying to organize the space. And the same with the decor in here, a lot of this stuff I already had and these new things like this little glass jar and the greenery picks are just items from the Target dollar spot that cost me $1 for a super simple little update to my kitchen centerpiece. While I was working on the organizing and decorating, Derek was working on putting the hardware back on the kitchen cabinets. And again, I just have to say another thank you to Ashley for inspiring me to use spray paint on the hardware and light fixtures instead of just completely replacing them because it made all of the difference and only cost me $6 for the can of paint. But now I'm just going to work on a little bit more decor and this was actually inspired by Kristen. I'm just making these flower sack curtains to go in the window and I absolutely love the way that they turned out. She did this in her little blue farmhouse and also most recently in their travel trailer and she vlogged her entire process for all of her DIY renovations. So I'm gonna make sure that I leave both hers and Ashley's channels and some of their DIY vlogs in the description box for you guys. Make sure that you check them out and leave them some comments letting them know that I sent you over. 
I'm going to put a little bit of greenery in the kitchen window and that is going to finish this space. I think it turned out beautifully and wraps up the kitchen makeover. So now I can go ahead and show you all of the before and after shots. And you guys, this is a total transformation. I'm so shocked that I was able to make this space exactly what I wanted it to be on such a tight budget. I hope that you all enjoyed following along with me and appreciated all of the tips and tricks that I gave you along the way. Make sure that you check out the links in my description box if you're interested in anything I mentioned today. Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you aren't already and I'll see you in the next one.